We are pleased now to welcome in Isabella Echeverry, former Colombian international. Isa, welcome. How are you? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Really happy to be here again. We are so happy to have you back. We're chatting Colombians internationally and everything they're doing because there are some top level Colombians competing all over the world in different domestic leagues. How does this expansion of players traveling to different club teams help Colombian women's football? It has been a before and after moment for Colombia because all of our big stars and are in big clubs around the world. You have Lacey Santos at Washington Spirit. You have Mayra Ramirez also at Chelsea making goals every weekend. You have Linda Caicedo in Real Madrid. I know you all love her. But we also have Manuela Pavi, a young, really young player at West Ham. And that is for sure something that, one, it's because all of the good performances of Colombia in the past few international tournaments, but also it will bring so much uh, more experience, more physical, athletic to our team. And I think you're, we are just starting to see the best momentum in Colombian soccer history. Now, Isabella, talk to me a little bit about this momentum. We've seen the U-20 World Cup in Colombia with, with sold out stadiums. Obviously, the passion in Colombia for football is long and well documented. But now with more access for women, we're seeing the talent be unearthed. Talk to me a little bit about this passion that we're seeing in Colombia for women's football and how it's growing. It's so it's so good to see. We were invisible for so much for so many years, and in the in the women's World Cup, in the U20 Women's World Cup in Colombia, we had more than 350,000 people seeing the players in the stadiums. We had more than 32,000 people in the stand of a final that were between two Asian players, right? So two Asian teams. So the fact that Colombia already is acknowledging the players, the fact that Colombia is going to the stadiums is just massive because it, one, brings visibility to our players, but it also brings a lot more interest in potential investors, a lot more interest for young girls to know that they can be soccer players. Uh, Colombia is a third world country and a lot of the times girls don't see the possibility to becoming soccer players. Now, after this World Cup, after Linda Caicedo scored amazing goals, after we had so many people in the stands, that changed. And now their parents also know that it's okay to be, and it's great to be a soccer player for their young girls and now young boys also know that girls can play soccer so it's it was a massive a massive achievement for our country and i'm sure that these players will never forget it and this experience will be key for their growth and their success but also for the growth and the success of the next generation of colombian soccer players isabella speaking of a player that is probably one of my favorite players to watch right now and one that young boys and young girls and even adults can look up to and admire her game is Myra Ramirez with Chelsea. She already has a goal on the season. She's nominated for Ballon d'Or. How impactful is it to see a Colombian player, the first ever to be nominated for something like that? It's, it's amazing because Maida is such a humble woman. She's so nice. She's, um, she has been working hard for so long. And I still remember the first time she went to the national team camp. I was a center back. She was a forward. And I remember the other center back telling me, dude, she's so strong. Like, watch <laughs> out. Don't get in her way. And there was me like a strong center back six years into the national team saying, of course I'm gonna go against her. I went against her 1v1 and I bound off of her. That's how it sounds <laughs> okay? Um, so I still remember that to that day. And when I was playing in Sevilla, the first thing I told my uh, sporting director was sign Mayra Ramirez. <laughs> she is so strong. The day she signed for Chelsea, the sporting director of Sevilla texted me and said, you were right, right? Um, so it's amazing to see her growth. It's amazing to see her shine with Chelsea. 
and to be one of the best players in the world for a Colombian, that's that's an amazing achievement. And that's something we would only be dreaming five or six years ago. The dream is a reality now with this nomination for Mayra Ramirez. On the other end of that spectrum is Linda Caicedo at just 19 years old. And she has made waves across media, across the world, internationally and also domestically with her play. How have you seen Linda Caicedo's game develop with all this different experience she's been able to get? Linda will be the best player in the world in a few years. Uh, I know her since she's like 12 and we've all known she was going to be a star and she had a big role model in her career that was Carolina Pineda, which was a player who played with me in the national team. And I remember Carolina telling me, dude, you don't know how good she is. Like she can be the next Ronaldinho, like she can be the next um, big player because of her talent. And she has developed and you can see her improve year after year. She's now making better decisions with and off the ball. She's now um, making more sacrifices defensively. Like, I don't I don't know if you saw the quarterfinals of the U20 World Cup, but she was going in the floor. She was making tackles. She was running down and up the field. And that is something that will really, really complement her game and will make her a better player because we all know how talented she is when she has the ball at her feet. She's so young. She has so many years ahead of her and she's just getting started. All right. Now, Isabella, we've, we've talked about the growth of the gaming in Colombia. Talk to me a little bit. Well, this is a two parter. First of all, talk to me a little bit about Colombia's domestic league and, and how you see it continuing to grow and develop. And, and digo me, eres un fiel de Nacional o de Medellín? De Yo de Nacional. De Nacional. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <A los verdes>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're good. Yeah, tell me, tell me about the, the, the domestic league and, and how it's growing. Yeah, well, the Colombian Domestic League starting in 2017, and it started like this really big league. It attracted massive talent from Latin America. We saw a final with more than 35,000 people, and the project started really well. It was a solid league. But year after year, it started going down. It started uh, with a lack of organization, with a lack of structure. You never knew how many teams were going to be in the league, if, they, if the league games were going to be streamed or not. The players had shorter and shorter contracts. The league was even shorter and shorter every year. I remember one year the league was one month and a half long, which is crazy, right? Um, nowadays, the league is not the best in terms of structure. Um, a lot of the players, good players, are leaving, um, as we saw in the beginning. One, because there's a lot more opportunities for Colombian players, but also because the league doesn't have the structure to support the massive amount of talent we have. Even though with a poor league and a league that is not great, you see Santa Fe reaching the final of the Copa Libertadores last night, right? So that's that speaks on the talent that Colombia has and the potential this league has to actually become one of the best in South America and follow um, the Mexican league, which also started in 2017 and has been able to grow over time. Isabella, thank you so much. It's really fun to hear you talk about this, and it's so clear how passionate you are about it. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I hope to see you all very soon. I hope so, too. We'll have you back. Don't worry.